Hello and full person, this is Anton, and well, looks like it's another day and another bizarre galaxy discovered by the James Webb that once again makes no sense, or at least is very difficult to explain based on modern cosmological theories. And in this case we're talking about this galaxy, a tiny red dot super super far away that seems to be producing emissions it should not be producing. And so let's talk about this discovery in a little bit more detail, talking about the mystery and potential resolutions. But I guess first of all, what exactly is this galaxy and where is it located? Well, like so many other unusual galaxies discovered by the James Webb, this one is also from the famous survey known as JADES, GWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey that's already discovered so many strange galaxies, including some of the biggest record holders. And in some of the recent videos in the description, we've talked about some of the biggest discoveries and actually some that also didn't really make much sense, such as the discovery from the most distant galaxy that seems to contain a lot of metallic elements, including things like oxygen, which nobody thought would be there. But this galaxy, Jade GSZ13-1, is a little bit closer. It's still about 33 billion light years away from us, but in terms of when it existed, the picture from the most distant galaxy is coming from the universe that's only about 294 million years old. Whereas here the universe is about 330 million years old, so approximately 35 million years difference. Technically though, this is basically the same period. But more importantly, this is basically the end of the so-called Dark Ages, the beginning of reionization. And so in order to understand this discovery, we actually do have to discuss the Dark Ages a little bit more and talk about this reionization. Now in case you're familiar with this, you can use that skippy thingy below me and go to the next part. But let's briefly talk about the Dark Ages. The universe suddenly cooled down and a lot of super hot plasma recombined into actual atoms and formed some of the first gas mostly containing hydrogen, helium and a little bit of lithium. And this is of course when we start seeing this first light cosmic microwave background. And well, for the next 200 million years or so, it's always been believed that the universe basically remained more or less dark and filled with a lot of neutral hydrogen. Or basically hydrogen that was not ionized, but also hydrogen that usually absorbs a lot of high energy light. For example, UV light or even gamma rays and x-rays don't actually go through this gas and instead by interacting with it, they ionize hydrogen and get absorbed in the process which as a result created a bit of a problem for modern cosmology. Some of the earliest and some of the most powerful light, which very likely produced UV radiation, and of course a lot of x-rays from things like black holes, is technically invisible to us. So during the dark ages and during the early period of reionization, a lot of these high energy photons basically got absorbed by something, which made the universe opaque in a lot of high energy observations. And we actually have so much evidence about this period from a lot of these distant galaxies. As a matter of fact, there's even an entire type of galaxies known to us whose light usually tells us that they're really far away and seem to be located inside this neutral gas. And the most famous type is known as Lyman Bray galaxy. Galaxies that can only produce light that's less than 912 angstrom in wavelength. Or galaxies whose spectrum will always have this bizarre break. And it's called Lyman break because it's related to Lyman limit and the Lyman series, which is basically hydrogen emission lines that looks something like this. These are hydrogen spectral series, resulting from the UV emission lines of hydrogen when the electron goes from one energy level to another. And this is essentially a telltale sign that something seems to be blocking a lot of this high energy light coming from these galaxies, with that something always being predicted to be this neutral hydrogen. But as more and more stars and as more and more galaxies became active, the very slowly reionized the entire universe which slowly transformed all of the neutral hydrogen in the universe into ionized hydrogen, making the universe once again transparent. But because a lot of this is still based on a lot of predictions and a lot of theories, one of the main missions for the James Webb was to basically understand how and when this happened, how long it lasted, and of course, what actually caused the reionization. And this reionization period was previously discussed in a video in the description, because scientists now believe they know what actually did it, in this case very powerful dwarf galaxies, but the timeline and some of the additional anomalies still don't really make sense. And in this case we now have another anomaly that's difficult to explain. This little red dot. And this is an anomaly for so many reasons. First of all here researchers don't even know exactly what this is. 
Little red dots have been discovered before, and once again, a video in the description talks about them more. But here, unlike previous detections, and unlike previous galaxies and even previous distant black holes, the spectroscopic analysis revealed something that definitely stands out. We get Lyman Alpha emission. Not a drop-off, not a break, but an actual emission from something super powerful producing UV light, which at these distances should not be visible. Once again, all of the previous detections, even from much closer galaxies, always have a drop-off or a break. Or basically, in certain UV frequencies, these distant galaxies should be completely invisible. But not this one. Wherever this red dot is, it's super visible and super bright, and produces a telltale sign of the Lyman Alpha emission that has never been seen so far away. With some of the galaxies that appear so much similar, only seen at much closer redshifts, here the redshift is usually less than 9. But even in these cases, the Lyman Alpha was never this bright. And moreover, the nature of this galaxy is also currently difficult to explain. Because here this is something super compact and something very powerful, and something that's obviously producing huge amounts of radiation. Now obviously this could be a very large population of super super hot massive stars, or possibly even population 3 stars, the first stars in the universe. It could also be a powerful central black hole, or a combination of both. And so whatever this is, we've never seen anything like this before. For example, if this is a central black hole, this would be the most distant supermassive black hole we've ever seen. And here, depending on its mass, it would potentially create some other problems for some of the explanations in regards to black hole evolution. Whereas if this is just stars, it's not clear why these stars seem to produce and seem to even leak so many ionizing photons that seem to be invisible in every other galaxy. And so for some unknown reason, somehow this galaxy seems to be shining through this neutral hydrogen fog ignoring a lot of previous assumptions we had about the early universe. Now once again, this is only 330 million years old, or basically one of the earliest galaxies we've ever seen, and it's definitely located right at the start of this reionization period. Now here the mystery could be resolved if this was much closer to us, or in much older universe, but this recent study definitively confirms the redshift. And this was actually achieved by measuring this Lyman alpha emission, and by confirming the redshift to be 13.05. In other words, the distance to this galaxy was actually confirmed by detecting this super powerful light from ionized hydrogen. But at the same time, we actually still see signs of some absorption, suggesting that this was indeed during the cosmic reionization period. And so in that sense, it does not break theories of reionization, it just seems to be some kind of a really bizarre anomaly. This super powerful ultraviolet light currently just cannot be explained. But nevertheless, researchers do provide some potential explanations. Here they basically think that this galaxy, or whatever this object is, created a kind of a massive bubble around itself that seems to be already entirely ionized. It's about 200,000 light years across, or about twice as big as the Milky Way galaxy, with this very early reionized region, possibly preventing extinction of this Lyman alpha radiation, and thus allowing it to pass through to eventually reach our planet. But in order to produce such a huge bubble, and in order to reionize everything around itself, it has to be an extreme galaxy. Either containing a super powerful active galactic nucleus or a black hole, or once again containing an enormous amount of very very powerful massive stars. Something that's also kind of difficult to explain because this is only 330 million years after the Big Bang. And so in this case, the biggest mystery is actually what exactly is causing all of this radiation, and what's producing this super bright emission. Here, the source of this Lyman alpha radiation and the source of this massive bubble is completely unknown. In fact, it might be some kind of a peculiar phenomenon, or maybe even some strange form of stars, that were predicted in some of the previous studies, but have never been found until now. And we'll actually discuss some of this in some of the future videos once we get some updates about this discovery, and once there are some additional observations, figuring out how this is possible. Either way, whatever this is, it seems to be much much hotter, more luminous, and more powerful than anything we've seen at this early stage. And because it's so tiny and so compact, we don't really know what it is. But because these little red dots are technically an ongoing mystery, you might want to check out more about them in one of the previous videos in the description. These strange phenomena, these unusual objects, seem to be all over the ancient universe, and right now there is no exact explanation for what they are or for what became of them as the universe evolved. But there have been similar detections at much closer distances, specifically a redshift of 8 or even close to 9, so this is not something that's absolutely impossible. 
is just extremely unlikely. And so once we discover what this is and what's going on here, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.